Hey, hey, y'all. Daniel and Nico again with Serenity Knives showing you Benchmade uh, in the Serenity Knife Shop and store. Showing you what we have online and for sale. We're going to go through a couple of things. You, you see a little bit of everything on here, but what we have in certain classes isn't a lot. We will grow with that as we grow, not just in our shop, but on the channel. And you can help that by supporting us with a like, subscribe, and any comments and below. Thanks, guys. Anyways. Um, we're going to cover our hunt class along with some fixed blades going into the other classes with fixed blades that we have and then into our gold class that we have in the shop as well. So uh, I'm going to start over here to my right and without further ado go with the couple of folders in the hunt class that we have starting with the North Fork Folder. One of my favorites because it incorporates wood into the handle although a laminate one of the very sexy looks that I like of uh, knives is some wood in the handle. This definitely covers it. I'll go with Tanico over for the stats on this guy. Yeah, so the North Fork has a blade length of 2.97 inches. It is open at 6.87 inches and closed at 3.9 and has a weight of 3.16 ounces. I'm a fan of this guy uh, as far as an EDC carry. It's got that double jimping right here yeah. down at the bottom and towards the top in case you want to get up there with the fingertip. Um, the recurve style, it's got that slight recurve in there. Um, from what I know, you're talking to a guy who's had zero hunts in his life, which I hope to change that one day. Uh, the skinning on a recurve I heard is really well. That's what I heard. And so that's helps. what we have in there as well. I love the fact that they use the stainless liner as the lanyard hole in here. It kind of uh, incorporates the integral uh, strength of it. Um, but this is a really cool EDC, guys. We definitely sell these pretty fast. We got one of these in right before we ended up uh, getting this video, so we were able to actually cover this, which is cool. But the North Fork folder, does this come in any other variants, or is this, this it with the, the North That's Fork? That's the only one now i can't remember yeah. if they ever had any other variant. i want to say they had a g10 version i'm not 100 percent sure so if i'm wrong <laughs> anyways this is the mini north fork or no the north fork folder you yeah. guys have any questions let us know on that now on should we even cover this one first or should we go the tagged out because this we one go we're gonna, out yeah first. we're gonna we're gonna talk really big about that one but tagged out and we'll, we'll go with this one first because this is basically uh bribery version of our favorite but the tagged out pretty new in yep. benchmade hunt series that eye popping orange which i like what they do in their bribery is a lot of really good eye popping colors this that orange definitely is something you will not lose in the woods thinned out mini crooked river-esque blade uh, but yeah go i'll go to nico for the stats on this guy here yeah so blade length is 3.5 inches it has an open length of 8.13 inches and closed at 4.63 inches and it has a weight of 2.1 ounces. Thoughts? I like that they did the reverse flicking hole or thumb hole because okay. I just like those and so that on an axis lock is pretty cool. I like that the blade steel is CPM 154. Right that's, that's our stainless at the shop for yeah. our handmaids. Um, the handle, it's a good shape for the most part. Yeah. Um, you definitely get a little grip as far as the rivalry goes. I also am a fan of the blade shape and it's fairly thin. Bringing back the grind, you've got a pretty slicey blade here. CPM 154 is one of those very versatile stainlesses. Uh, and I only know that because like Nico said, that's one of the ones we use in the shop for our custom knives. Um, and it's just one of those ones that can go kitchen or carry. And I'm glad that people are actually using it more in the carry industry because people don't know that CBM 154 is one of those great stainless uh, steels. But it is one of those knives that, um, you know, I don't know. If you're getting into Benchmade for the first time, grab it. It's a great knife, but I think it mimics our favorite knife, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But this is the Tagged Out, which is the new uh, one of the new guys from Benchmade and the, the lovely anodized orange hardware as well. I really like the metallic finishes they get on those guys there. Their orange has really grown on me over the years. Yeah, no, for me too. Me too, yeah. for sure. For sure. Uh, all right, guys, on our final uh, hunt folder, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on this guy. Maybe not too much, but this is our favorite here in Texas. 
uh, in Ross Hayes in Houston where we're located, this guy does not last long. Um, we were actually just as lucky to get that North Fork folder as we were to get these before we filmed them. But the mini Crooked River, um, we've had a couple full size Crooked Rivers, mm -hmm. but this guy is definitely our favorite. Nico and I both carry our own, which we'll go over here in a little bit, but this is my favorite knife from Benchmade. Probably the best everyday carry purchase I've made. I will probably make another one down the line uh, when I feel like it, but yeah, I'll let Nico take over with the stats here. Yeah, so stats, it has a blade length of 3.4 inches. It has an open length of 7.89 inches and a closed length of 4.5 inches. The weight is 3.29 ounces. It's got laminated wood and aluminum bolsters, versatile pocket clip, G10 spacer. Yeah. It's pretty sweet, S30B blade. That classic bolster look, guys, um, is one of my favorite. You incorporate wood with it, it's just beautiful. Uh, just to kind of show you what Nico and I have here, we both customize ours in the custom shop. I've got a black bolster, red anodized hardware along with the wood handles and then an M4 blade. You can see it's significantly been sharpened and worn, um, but carried this guy for pretty much the past two, three, three years. Red backspacer here um, and then Nico has his, I'll let him tell you his. Yeah, so I went with an S30B blade, it's my favorite steel, so I wanted to have it on this guy with the black coating, black bolster, the black hardware, and then I did the natural G10 for the handle and the spacer. Kind of bummed that they're not doing that anymore for the bug out or the mini Crooked River, but hopefully it'll bring it back. But what's cool about the natural G10 is you can dye it, and so Daniel helped me dye in this green. Well, Really dig this thing. It's yeah. Super awesome weight. Um, had a hard time customizing it. There's quite a few options to make this knife look good. Um, it's just a sweet knife. Yeah, big enough to do a good amount of work, small enough not to be intimidating, and pretty enough to pretty much take with you everywhere. Uh, yeah. And this is me just kind of ranting on it for that's that, but said. thank you. But that's basically what you get with the Mini Crooked River Yard. All right, on to the fix. Like I said, we'll go from hunt fix into the regular fix that we have and then on to the gold class. But we will start with a popular one that Benchmade has kind of gotten into a couple variants now. Uh, we usually use the Hunter Orange in our shop just because in Houston and in Texas, hunting is huge. And orange is one of those colors that hunters don't lose very often because if it falls into the woods, you can pretty much see it and catch it. That's what I know. Once again, I've said it in other videos and this one as well. I've had zero hunt experience, but Nico's one of the, the main guys who listens to our customer base and knows what they're asking for, knows what they're wanting. And the orange definitely does pop with us. Uh, and definitely something we have for our hunters and the hunt class. Uh, and once again, Benchmade does a pretty good job in, in that orange. So we're not mad at it, um, but you will see a lot of that here when it comes to the hunt series. And in the Meat Crafter, which is another one of those uh, great knives that has CPM 154, just like we talked about with the tagged out, that was a folder. This is one of those kitchen knives that has that same steel. So a very versatile blade steel, guys, for you guys to try out and test and see what I'm talking about there. But I'll let Nico take over with the rest of the stats on this guy. Yeah, so the Meat Crafter has a blade length of 6.09 inches. It is... Oh, where's the total length? It might not just open all the way. Open. Oh, okay, I didn't expect it to say open because it's a fixed Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> that must be a typo from Benchman. 11.08 inches for the full length. It has a weight of 3.24 ounces. Super light. Yeah. Um, the grip feels really good. It's Santa Prime. Yeah. It's just their mold, whatever. Um, CPM 104 is great because it gets really sharp and it's easy to sharpen back up it's not so like kitchen knives that's where that kind of steel benefits you don't really need like an s90b i know they do s90b on their some of their kitchen stuff but um cpm 154 is great it's yeah. super sharp yeah well said um i agree with that 100 percent. those higher end stainlesses when it comes to kitchen knives you know this is me going on a small rant surprise um 
those things are going to be harder to sharpen and get back sharp when it comes down to something like CPM 154 where you can easily get it sharper uh, or back to sharpness on your own fairly quickly whether you have a stone or a rod different kinds of applications which that will be in another video but the, we use CPM 154 very exclusively with our stainless just because of that versatile uh, application with it in, in carry knives and in kitchen knives but also because it is fairly easy to sharpen when it comes to stainless as we've moved forward to this like Endura Max stainless kind of realm where we're making these steels substantially harder to, to uh, corrode and, and wear down we're making those harder to sharpen so these higher end stainlesses you don't want that in the kitchen knife uh, opinion not fact but that's what I'll go from there and the meat crafter is one of those with the thinness along with the stainless and the steel, this thing is a really, really good breakdown knife. Um, I don't think you would want to tackle any joints or bones with it because of the thinness, but it is one of those you can take with you. It's got a really cool kinetic sheath as well that snaps in very well. I'm very uh, happy with the retention there. And you can also turn it upside down with a little drip hole we've got right there. So that way, if you do leave it wet, which we don't recommend, it will drip out keeping it upside down. If you don't do that, you're on your own. Just because it's stainless doesn't mean it won't stain. It just means it won't stain as fast. But that is the meat crafter. Do we cover everything there? Yeah, one sec. The sheath weighs 1.77 ounces. So in total, it's about, it's like under five ounces. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think I got that guy a little. So very lightweight, put it on your pack or whatever. Yeah, the meat crafter, y'all. Right on. All right, now on to Steep Country Hunter. This guy here, um, S30V Benchmates, very base, along with that same material. What was it called? Santa Prince. Santa Prince. Um, yeah. Thanks, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, just go ahead and go into it, man. Let's go. We're just going to roll with that. Blade length of 3.54 inches. And open again length is 7.76 inches. The weight is three ounces even. The sheath is 1.1 ounces. So 4.1 ounces in total weight yep. with the sheath. Very similar to the North Fork folder. Um, it's got that double jipping it's for the fingertip in case you're getting into things and also with the thumb. I like the fact that they textured the back with the, the tang, so that way you get a good grip. But this, say it again. Santa Prine. Santa Prine has got some good grip to it, to a good retention. It almost feels like it starts to get like a, a film going or it excretes like a weird kind of stickiness to it. But that's just the material. I don't know, that's just, I guess that's just me. I, I probably, sorry guys. No, <laughs> it does have a very grippy texture. No, I don't know if that excretes anything. It's, but. <laughs> it, all right, man. Here, the kinetic sheath also has a drip hole. Yeah, well, what, what what yeah, you're gonna take over since I'm making fun of me with my excretions. Anyways, guys, the Steep Country Hunter. Thanks, Nico. Yeah, we normally have a Hidden Canyon Hunter too, which is like a smaller version of that with wood scales. Okay. But we don't have it out here. All right. Well, it's sold out. Well, but we'll have more. Yes, so we do have that in stock, but Nico just want to let you guys know that we don't. Thanks. <laughs> All right. I'm the villain now. Yeah. Yeah, after that comment. <laughs> All right, guys, the altitude. Back on track, right? The, altitude. the Benchmade altitude. Really cool skeletalized, skeletized, skeleton, skeleton, skelly, skelly knife. Uh, carbon fiber over inlay, however you'd like to describe it. That eye popping orange Cerakote, if I'm not mistaken. And the really great Kydex retention sheath along. Um, you can make this a very versatile everyday carry if you wanted to. Sure. This is something that, you know, as a fixed blade is not big in that realm or, or too intimidating. But this can be worn as a neck knife. You could put something on here to put it as, as a hip or pocket carry. Uh, it's a super versatile but small knife there. Yeah, this is actually our last one. I just remembered it's discontinued. So we won't oh, have wow. any more of these coming in. It is S90B. Did you say that? No, I, just, I didn't that. say that. It's got these little carbon fiber um, pinchers. I don't know what you call those scales, but it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else yeah. to say. It, it, it's, it's a cool knife. The the length. And the, oh, this. Yeah. Well, I don't have that. Oh, it's, well. All yeah, right. I forgot that this thing is discontinued. Yeah. Well, 
What I will say is, um, it is one of the knives that can be used for a very versatile uh, amount of things, very utilitarian. And with S90V and that full grind, it is a very slicey blade. Um, I hate the fact that I don't have the stats for you, but I'm not gonna sit here and try and spit something that's, that's uh, wrong. But that is the altitude. That will be our last one there, so uh, you very well may be seeing this and it might be purchased already. Apologize if that is the case. On to the next one, the Saddle Mountain Skinner. And we have, oh, we have two Saddle Mountain Skinners. So we'll bring them both. I've got the, it looks, I'm not gonna even guess what that material is, but it's got the Kydex sheath here. I'll let Nico take over with that guy. Yeah, so you're holding the Dash 1, which has a rich light grip with G10 spacers. It's got an S90V blade. The blade length is 4.2 inches. The open length is 8.7 inches, and the weight is 4.3 ounces. Uh, the sheath weight is 1.38 ounces, so just over five ounces, five and a half ounces total. Um, yeah, this, this is one of my favorite fixed plates from them. Did you cover the handle material on it? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's rich light. Rich light, so... With a G10 spacer. Okay, so basically some sort of a composite. I'm not going to try and guess what rich light is, uh, but you've also got this version that has the uh, stabilized, stabilized wood, the veneer wood on here, along with the leather sheath instead of the Kydex sheath, if you want to grab yeah, that guy. and S30V on the blade. Ooh, what so, was that one? S90. Oh, well, okay. Two very different versions of the Saddle Mountain Skinner. Um, kind of classy over here, and that's yeah. that modern, like, go to hunt. I really like that. Yeah, this is his favorite. And both blade shapes have this kind of widening belly right here. I assume that's not a recurve, but it's more meant for kind of skinning and breaking down animals. Um, but you've got double jipping here as well, which is really cool. The texture on the back, but kind of subset, not as pokey as the yeah. Steep Country Hunter. And um, two very good high grade stainless uh, steels with an integral uh, lanyard hole. But I mean, I don't think you need that with how much the hand yeah. this, this covers. You could use it as like an added decor, de decorative kind of thing, but I don't see the, the use for it. Uh, does yours have the little yeah. kind of yeah, yeah, right here? Nice little yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to show Big you fan off. of this guy. I'm, I'm more on the classy side with the leather sheath and the wood handles, but if that's not your gig, We've also got the rich, rich light uh, with the orange G10 guy. And real quick, if you want the stats on the altitude, check our website out, surroundingknives.com, um, or hit us a shout if you want to talk to us personally. I enjoy that, and we'll get back to you on that, but I apologize that we don't have it at the moment. All right, guys, into the rest of the fixed blades. We're going to go with the blue class fixed blades and then our only black class at the moment, and then we'll cover the ever so sought after gold class. I've got the Bushcrafter here. This is a little bit of a tank, guys. So I know we talked about the Adamus, um, but this one's fixed blade, so you're definitely going to go through some stuff with this guy. Uh, it is a Seibert, Seibert design. I'm sorry if I butchered that. That's my fault. Um, but I'm in love with this handle material. I'll let Nico take over from here. Yeah, so it has a blade length of 4.4 inches with a total length of 9.15 inches. The weight is 7.72 ounces, so it's a, it's a heavier guy. Yeah. And they, it's a G10 with S30V for the blade. Put that in your hand. That doesn't feel like G10. I feel like my card. Just tell me I'm lying. It, no, I know yeah, what it says. It, I, I saw a G10 on there well, too. Well, I had to double check. Right. You're right. Same and it does feel like my card. Yeah. That's weird. So, as far as G10 goes, that is some of the best feeling G10 I've felt from it's, Benchmade. It does say hand, hand blended green. Cartridge. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't. But it feels super, super good and grippy. 
Uh, if you're a fan of micarta and you know that kind of retention it gets when it gets worked in and stuff, this handle definitely feels like that. I like it a lot. So whatever they did there, and you know what, they probably just finished it off of a hot, off a rough grit. Yeah. But man, I love that feel. I love that feel a lot. The contour on it's kind of sexy, um, but you know, just to take away from the girth, I can see why they did that. It's got that saber grind, so this is not something you're going to have to worry about breaking because full grinds kind of give you that added fragility. Fragility? Right? I got that right? Yeah. Wow. But the fact that you have this kind of saber grind, it's a little bit more than halfway. You've got that thickness there, and that's going to be a durable baby right there. Um, definitely something you can go to town with. It's got this cool kind of suede leather sheath. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's a pocket for a ferro rod or... Yeah, like a little flint thing right. or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't come with one, right? No, no. no. Okay. With the snap um, and a little buckle right here, guys, this is the, the Benchmade Bush Crafter, kind of like the Meat Crafter, but more for outdoors. It's got those rivets that you can keep clean very easy, too, so I, I like that. Yeah, you can have like baton, I think that's what this thing is designed. You can do a lot more than baton with that guy, that's for sure. All right, moving on to the uh, anonymous. Yeah, um, a little weary about this guy. Then we, we've had discussions about this, but it seems to be a pretty well-performing knife so far from what we've heard, right? Yeah. Um, I feel it's a little thin, but I've heard from a couple people that this has been a pretty durable knife. Um, we'll go to Nico for the stats. It's kind of got that same feel. Yeah, so G10 handle. It has a CPM crew wear blade and it has a blade length of 5 inches with a total length of 9.83 inches and a weight of 5.94 ounces. So I think crew wear is the reason it's so much thinner. I think that's where this might be the area where modern steels really comes into play for using them out and about because if, if crew wear really is as tough as it is being reported to, you may not need as thick of a spine. As like the bushcrafter. Yeah. Right on. And just so you guys understand, you know, so the thickness, that's substantially thinner than the bushcrafter, which I would definitely feel comfortable going through some wood, batoning, uh, a lot of things versus this guy. Yeah. Go ahead. What were you about to do? You're talking about the weight. No, yeah. I was going to say the blade thickness on the anonymous is... 0.114 right. whereas on the bushcrafter it's 1.64 wow yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so it's a substantially bigger guys um the g10 feels great the blade shape i love i love the fact they put this in tickle guard here yeah. you don't see that in a lot of manufactured blades uh, yeah. um this is kind of a handmade thing and i always say that because we make knives very similar to this so i'm very happy they did this because you don't have to worry about it going uh, all the way, which is kind of what this has but doesn't, um, that's very substantial there. So you can definitely go harder as far as going into things. Um, I would like more reports on how well this is uh, held up, what you've gone through, what you haven't gone through. If you've got any videos of you, send that in to us. I really appreciate that. Uh, but CBM Crew Air is one of those newer steels. It also comes with a really cool Kydex sheath that, is this the right sheath for it? Yeah, the cool Kydex sheath nylon belt loop and a little kind of insert for another fail rod very uh, very similar to the bushcrafter there yeah right on so the benchmade anonymous nice little jipping on the back is i almost feel like that's the replacement well this is still around but right but if they discontinue that you'll see that as why yeah it was it was it was discontinued right on guys all right so that wraps up a lot of our just regular everyday thing that we have as far as benchmade guys now we're going on to the, we're going on to the specialized things that we have in the shop. You're going to see something you haven't seen in a while when it comes to uh, Benchmade, just because we've had one of these for a while. Um, but this is our gold class, and in our goal here is to try and get the gold class once a year in our shop. We're not huge enough to get everything that Benchmade produces right now, but you can help that out by liking and subscribing or commenting down below and creating activity on our page. But. What I'll say is, is as we continue to grow, we'll get more of those knives and do those things as we get better. Um, right now, what we have are some pretty cool knives though. And uh, I know that because we've gotten some activity on them when we've ordered more than one on a couple of them. But we'll go ahead and get into it. 
I don't know if we have the stats on all of them just yet. Uh, do we have the stats on at least this one? Yeah. And I can pull up the other guys? Yeah. We'll all right. So let's get this guy kind of presented to you. And then we will go ahead, cover that guy, and I'll get the stats on these. Okay. So the Mini Osborne is the gold class for 2022. They are making as many as are bought. And then they're done with it at the end of the year. So it's got damaged steel, it's got aluminum bolsters, and some really nice blue fat carbon with a uh, gold, what do they call it, like a floating backspacer because mm -hmm. it's not connected. It's gold plated, very flashy, very, uh, very blue. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's a good looking knife. Yeah, the Mini Osborne is a great uh, platform to kind of do this on. If you're looking at that high-end kind of knife, I am a fan of the gold floating backspacer as well. It is one of those to grab. We've already sold, uh, I think, one or two of these guys, but we have one or two more left in stock. Um, it is definitely a collector, as Benchmade always does. They um, provide a certificate for these collector knives, and as well as, I think, number some of them, depending on yeah. what they're doing. I don't know where this no one's number. Oh, right. I see it, I see it, 2709. So yeah, take a look, guys. This is the Mini Osborne Gold Class, which is the Gold Class for 2022. Right on. And uh, the blade length is 2.92 inches. The open length is 6.76 inches. Closed is 3.84, and the weight is 2.24 ounces. Alright guys, now we're going to go on to the next gold class. This is the Tengu Flipper. Do you know what year this one is? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I want to say it was last year. Okay, in, so 21. In conjunction with the Saibu. Okay, got you. So, um, Benchmade comes out with a couple of gold classes a year, or sometimes one, sometimes two. Yeah, they, they, they have like one main one typically, and they'll also sometimes have like these special runs. Like I know this year they had some mini river or something. Right on, right on. So this is the gold class Tengu Flipper. We're gonna guess, unless you want to hold steady on 2021 as the year. No. We can guess. We can say that's yeah. Guess. So we're not gonna don't don't quote us, but the Tengu Gold oh, Tengu Flipper Gold Class. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I'll see if they've got a year. So on. the uh, blade length on this guy is 1.14 inches. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's about 1.4. Tengu Gold Class. No, that's the. <laughs> My fault. Got the wrong one up, guys. Go ahead. I was gonna say this looks. It's sub three for sure. It's a Tonto, kind of almost more of that traditional Tonto, but it's still a little bit American looking. It's got this really cool Arctic, I forget what they call it, the Arctic Blast or something. Hey, there we go, dude. My fault. Oh, no, you're good. So the blade length is 2.77 inches. Got it, guys. Overall length is 6.61 inches. Uh, closed. I have no idea. The handle length, where's that? Handle length is 3.85, so that's pretty much what it is closed. It has a noble, noble rough ear. Sorry, I probably butchered that guy's name, but he makes these cool backspacers and he's done scales for like the Mini Crooked River Gold Class. I think it might glow. Some of them glow if you light them up or if you're in the dark. Uh, blue titanium liner lock. So the liners are blue anodized titanium. Uh, it's a nice little flipper. Right on. Um, Raffir is a high-end handle knife, ma handle material maker. He makes a lot of really great looking things, uh, messes with a lot of higher-end material, a lot of mammoth, a lot of this stuff that he does himself. Um, I am a fan of him, so having this on one of the, the knives is actually pretty cool. Uh, they also kind of left the little badge here, uh, blank, which is, is cool if, if someone wants to get something engraved in there for their personalization, that's cool. Like always, uh, Benchmade numbers their gold class. This is 2510. Uh, this is also a, you said a, did you say the designer here? Yosser? Yes, J Josser? Oh, no, I did not. It's yeah. A, what's his name? Yosser? Josser? Josser? Yosser. Uh, he, he works with Pena. So. Yeah, I apologize if I'm butchering it, but this is the that is the designer here. Um, really cool 
I don't want to say everyday carry because this is a gold class, but it is a very small collectible gold class. Comes with a little cool leather pouch. I think it's shark skin. I think it is something not cow leather. I'll say that. Um, blue stitching on there goes really well. Like all gold classes, it comes with a certificate of authenticity. Come get your certificate of authenticity with this knife. But that's what all gold class comes with. So that Did way, you it? know date on there by chance no i didn't see any year of when that came out i don't think it's on that but um well that might be on the serenity knife webpage. we got this in 21 so it, so it's got to be 21 yeah yeah we're gonna stick so it's that. discontinuous our only one come check it out in the shop we're online we have the specs up there too right on uh and on our last gold class guys when we got into benchmade um before Nico was even here, we got this guy. So this is actually one of our staples. It's our first gold class we've had. We've still been holding on to it. Um, just haven't sold. But one of my favorites was when the bug out came out, they had a gold class bug out. And so uh, this is one of the ones that came out. I'm not gonna say what year. This is 2019. 2019, so that's what we'll go by on that guy. But. I'll let Nico take over the, the specs on this guy. Do you have them up or no? Yeah. yeah. You do? Perfect. Yeah, so the blade length is 3.24 inches. It's the same specs as a normal bug out. Right. Overall length is 7.46 inches. And the handle length is 4.22 inches. Right. On. Again, it has a damascus steel blade. It has carbon fiber. It has their standard carbon fiber scales with a... Um, I don't know if that's noble rough right here, but I think that, that is. Okay. I, I'm gonna. I think I remember that being one of the first times seeing him interact with Benchmade. So I okay. want to say that's a Refere custom inlay. And then some blue hardware. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. The weight on this guy is 2.1 ounces. So again, still very light, like the bug out. Yeah. So if you're a bug out fan, this is definitely one of the ones that you probably want in your collection if you don't have it. If you're a bug out person, um, but. Great knife platform to definitely do the gold class on. I'm really happy that they did that. Like all gold class, this one's numbered. This number is going to be 1425. Comes with a certificate of authenticity. Ticity, ticity, ticity. So, you know this came from Benchmade and the factory. Um, man, I don't really know what else to say other than, than you know, if you like the bug out platform, you're going to want this knife just because it adds to that kind of collector ish to it. I don't know why the other ones afterwards don't have a pretty cool presentation box like the bug out does, um, but we'll just leave you the satisfaction of giving you that, that look at the last one here. Yep. So guys, that's going to cover the rest of the knives here at Serenity Knives. If you have any questions or any kind of things on knives that you want to see, please put it down in the comments. We hope to be bringing you more videos along with the brands that we have and some of our own stuff as we continue this channel. Your support definitely helps out, so make sure you're interacting with us. Any questions you guys leave in the comments, uh, shoot us a message on Instagram at serenityunlimited.com. Uh, Serenity Unlimited on Instagram, Serenity Knives on Facebook. Other than that, that's going to be it for us, guys. We appreciate you hanging out. Nico and Daniel, see you on the next one.